Hey, what's going on, Facebook? Uh, just trying to uh, let you guys know that I'm here, here for you. Um, I know that um, uh, as I'm waiting for people to uh, to come in on the um, on the live, I just wanted to reach out and just kind of just say, you know, um, uh, the wife is out. Uh, she came out today. Um, came out this morning. Um, the the doctors told her to wash all the sheets. Um, so we've been uh, cleaning up the house uh, today, uh, trying to uh, prepare for her to come out. So uh, she got a lot going on today. So we're going to postpone um, the interview till tomorrow because I want to, uh, I want her to uh, get everything done that the doctors asked for her to do before coming out. So uh, just hanging out in the Cadillac. Uh, I got the... Uh, uh, just trying to do a little outside work. So I just uh, wanted to decide to come and do the session right here in the car. So uh, a lot of people uh, have been uh, asking me questions like, um, like, what is an addict? Uh, how do you know the difference between uh, social drinking, uh, social uh, using substances, and, um, and whenever you have an addiction? So uh, I think the the best way for me to describe uh, if you're an addict is is whether or not uh, you are compelled to uh, to you so so when people say say like um, you know can you go you know a month without using is that not a big deal for you um, some people can drink um, drink on occasions um, I'm noticing now that that um, from watching Facebook, it's a lot more of my friends that I think uh, might need some treatment after uh, after this whole episode because uh, anytime you start to to and and the scary thing about this is that people are drinking and they're using substances to cope with boredom, and and, and that's what's going to be the unhealthy thing because the longer that this keeps going. Um, once we get past, you know, the 14 to the 21 days and everybody is drinking every day, uh, you're going to start creating a dependency. And, and that's going to be scary because it's going to be a lot of people who did not expect, just like how, how whenever people go to the doctors and they get prescribed Percocet, so they get prescribed oxycodone or cotton, um, and, they, and, and they start to use it as prescribed, uh, regardless, even if you use it for, as prescribed, if you keep using it, uh, you might end up with a dependence and then build up some tolerance. So I just want to uh, uh, let people know that that this is uh, this is real, and you don't you don't want to uh, crank up uh, even addiction, even if you don't uh, uh, think that you are an addict. And so my suggestion for some of you people out there is to uh, maybe cut a couple of days out in the week and see like if you can handle being bored for two or three days in a row without drinking or using um, a substance. Um, but when it comes to, to whether or not you're an addict, sometimes you have to go back all the way to the root of when, when the word addict came about. So if you look, go back in history, the word addict uh, started back whenever there was like... Uh, it was in the slavery era back whenever there were kings and queens. So what they used to do was is, is they would take the slaves and they would um, put them out in the field. And what they would do is they would put a big, large rock. Um, they would put a large rock out in the middle of the field and they would spread the rocks out and they would uh, chain each slave to the rock. And what happened was is that is that the rock um, couldn't be moved. So the the addict or the slave would have to they could only they could only walk around in a circle which was usually about 15 feet and that's all they worked so they worked a 15 feet radius and so the reason why they were called an addict was because they had something added to them that they could not get off of them so um so if you look at the basis of what where the definition of addict came from um, uh, you might get a better understanding of what addiction is because addiction is having something uh, attached to you that you can't get rid of. And so uh, I've noticed in this field is that no matter how 
how much work people have done or how much they have done. Sometimes sometime just having um, that addiction or that alcohol, that, that, that use that's paired to yourself for so long that you just can't get rid of. So uh, if that's you, if that's been, if this has been a problem that's been rising up in your life for, for, um, for a good amount of time, you've lost some relationships, you've lost jobs, uh, you've, you've, um, you've created atmospheres that maybe people don't like being around you because of your attitude or the way that you, you handle situations. And, and, and a lot of people say, uh, a lot of people ask the question, do is is it genetic um that's one of the most difficult questions because um is are there proof that that it can be genetics um there are some proof out there but uh i would be more compelled to say that that it's more of a operant um conditioning uh it's a learned behavior uh, a lot of times when people are being raised by people that have addiction problems they notice to start to live their life according to that. So when they get upset, when they get frustrated, they go back and they handle the problems kind of the way that they saw it before. So uh, a lot of these things that, that you guys might struggle with or you might deal with, it might be just learned behavior. So um, just like I told the story uh, yesterday or the day before about the kid that passed down, um, the grandmother and the great grandmother passed down information uh, we have to really look at what we're doing when we're raising children or we having uh, um, we got to realize what we're teaching them. And if you are uh, struggling with addiction and those are some of the ways that you handle some of your problems, trust me, your children are watching the way that you cope with life. So um, um, really pay attention to the way that you go about coping in your life because you might be surprised your kids are watching. Um, so, uh, uh, when it comes to addiction, uh, a lot of times people say, you know, David, man, you, uh, uh, all you do is, uh, you went to school to learn this. Uh, uh, you'll be, um, uh, you'll be very surprised, man. I had, uh, I had a good time. Um, uh, when I mean I had a good time, I had a blast getting high on um, that whole lifestyle. Um, but the reason why I quit is because I just didn't like the, the consequences that came with it. Uh, I always had consequences. Uh, no matter if it was going to jail, if it was going to probation, I constantly kept going through that cycle. Um, I remember the last, uh, the last, uh, my my drug of choice was um, PCP. Um, um, that was just, I don't know why I picked that one, but uh, I thought I was a superstar uh, on that substance. But I remember um, the last time that I used it, um, uh, I was I was living with my wife at the time. Um, she was my girlfriend. We were in the process of trying to um, build our, our life. And uh, I remember she was supposed to come home at like nine o'clock at night. And I went to um, I went to the north side when I was in Houston uh, off of Cross Timbers and uh, 45. And I went to go um, pick something up, and I came back. I was I was supposed to pick up some. I was supposed to fill up my tank up with gas, um, but uh, I got the bright idea to go ahead and smoke some before I made it to the gas station. For some way or another, I forgot to go to the gas station, and I ended up running out of gas. And when I ran out of gas, I was probably about a half a mile away from my house. Um, I was about. Uh, a half a mile from the gas station. So I'm standing there on the side of the street and my wife drives up on me. Uh, and at that time, I couldn't really talk. I couldn't verbalize what the conversation was. But for the longest, she she never knew anything about my addiction um, because I kept it. She knew I had a past addiction, but she didn't know that I had a current addiction. And so at that point, she was just like, I'm done. Uh, we had a long conversation and she just said, I'm moving out and I'm going back to New Jersey. And she was like, you can either go with me or you can live this lifestyle that you're living. And so I really thought about that, man. I thought about it hard um, because I did not want to leave my life at that time because it was I was a teacher. Um, I couldn't get fired. Um, I was doing really good. Um, I was a runner up for teacher of the year at the time, even though I had an addiction issue. But for my wife, my wife just was like pretty much like I'm just not dealing with addiction in my life. So um, it's either me or, or the addiction. And I thought about it. 
Uh, I called a couple friends, um, but then I remember I called my brother, and I was just like, man, what do I do, man? Like, I, I, I love her, but uh, I just can't seem to kick this uh, addiction. And so he was like, well, I mean, she asked you whether or not you wanted to go with her and move to the East Coast, or do you want to stay here? He was like, my brother just told me, man, you've done everything here. Like, there's nothing that you that you haven't done and I think that you can make it make it happen anywhere you go and so uh, I called the school up I resigned uh, and and we packed up we packed up my apartment in about a week and we got uh, I went and got a got a U-Haul truck that's a whole nother story um, um, uh, I still hadn't finished uh, using at that time uh, so I went to go pick up the U-Haul for us to leave uh, I went back to Cross Timbers in 45, um, just thought I could just kind of sneak in and then sneak back out. And I went to go use and, and I ended up getting a U-Haul. I was on the way back. And as I was coming through the apartment complex, I forgot that, that the, um, the covered parking deck was uh, a little bit shorter than, than the U-Haul. So I ended up peeling the whole top of the U-Haul off. Now you gotta be, the, the funny part about that was the guy asked me if I wanted to get insurance and I was like, man, I can drive, we're good. Just don't do the, do the, uh, do the uh, insurance. So by the time I peeled the top back and I drove it back to the, um, I drove it back to the U-Haul, he just walked out and he looked and he said to me, he was like, you might have should have got the insurance. So that was um, pretty much one of the last times that I used, um, uh, and and I I had enough to drive to the East Coast. So um, uh, as I was driving the U-Haul, I was still using. I'm not encouraging anybody to drive and use, but um, when I made it to Pennsylvania, that was it. Um, I never looked back. Uh, I went to the Poconos. It was the first time I ever saw a chipmunk ever in my life. Um, those were little neat creatures uh, walking uh, on the mountains on the Poconos, and so everybody always says like like they they um, um, everybody tries to make people recover from this addiction the way that they recovered, and and I don't agree with that. Um, just because something was done for you doesn't mean that it's good for the next person. So um, for anybody that's sponsoring people, um, just remember that just because the way you got sober doesn't mean that everyone else can get sober the same way. Um, I, I know for me, uh, I got sober in, on a ride um, after I changed locations. Um, but that doesn't mean I went to AA, I went to NA, I went to treatment. Uh, I never did quite change. But uh, I knew whenever I quit my job and I moved to the East Coast, there was no way that I was going to end up making it if I ended up getting high. So uh, I just went without uh, using uh, and, and I figured out how to manage my life. Uh, got a lot of self-taught books and read a lot of books about who I am and what I was about. Um, and as soon as I got my next job and I got some insurance, I, I went in and got a therapist and really started working on a lot of the traumas and a lot of the issues I had. So uh, I just want to let you know that that, that addiction is real. Um, uh, and some of you guys that, that are struggling with addiction, just remember that, that it doesn't have to be that big rock that's tied to you that's chained. Um, there are ways to break that chain, uh, and, and I think the best way of breaking that chain is just learning some stuff about yourself um, through through self-help groups like AANA, um, um, Celebrate Recovery. It doesn't matter what type of, of, of sessions or, or, um, or self-help groups, but I'll tell you, one of the biggest differences that I've learned is what I've noticed in that is that whenever, whenever we as addicts um, uh, struggle with with addiction, we try to make it someone else's issue. Um, just because other people don't agree with the way that we see ourselves in recovery, um, uh, don't it's not their issue. It's our issue. If they don't want to stop doing what they're doing, it doesn't matter. It's not their problem. Your addiction is your problem. So. Uh, I just wanted to reach out to you guys and explain what addiction is and, and, and just really uh, show you guys that, that your addiction is different than anyone else's addiction and, and you don't ever have to 
um, uh, uh, agree uh, on on whether or not you are an addict or not. But if you just don't like the consequences or you don't like the way that your life is going, um, then let's not even make it about addiction. Let's just work on trying to figure out what's your problem. So uh, everybody has problems. Everybody has um, um, things they need to work on. But the best way to get a solution is just to ask somebody or talk to somebody for some help. So uh, it's Saturday. Um, uh, good to see everybody. Hope you guys have a good weekend. And um, like I said before, I'm really hoping to uh, get my wife on here so that she can explain to you um, her life is being uh, quarantined and, and how she coped with it. So uh, it's it's great to see everybody uh, logging in. Uh, uh, I see you, Kristen and Lisa and Joy and Sam. Uh, I, I even see Richard over there. Looks like uh, Mr. Burns made it over. Uh, so uh, it's cool to see some of the people that, that's in the recovery process. And uh, uh, keep it up, guys. Um, I'm, I'm really happy to see that that the recovery world is still making it out there and they're still shining so i uh, love you guys and keep it up all right it's the cadillac counselor signing out